CDF and then our simulation from the CDF, we're going to take the function f and we're going to start with x equal to 0. u is going to be a random uniform number. Increment x and then return x. All right, we'll try these. Okay. All right, and so let's just see the CDF. Um, and basically, what the CDF does is, you know, we ask for you know zero, three point five. It's going to say, um, wait, that's that's not right. And choose zero p to the I'm sorry, p to the i. Okay, I have this programmed wrong. Okay. So, you know, what's the uh, what's the step function at zero? It's 0 0.125. What's the step function at one? It's 0 0.5. The step function at two is 0 0.875, and the step function at three is one. Okay. So the CDF returns the step function. Okay, so this, these are the values of the step function. And then basically what we're going to do is we're going to say, uh, give me a random number, and it says 0 0.51375. Okay? And we're going to ask in the simulate, we're going to start off with x is equal to 0. Okay? And we say, at x equal to 0, is that value small? Is the value of the CDF less than our random uniform? Yes, it is. Okay. Now increment x to 1. At x equal to 1, is that smaller than this? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, and then so we increment it to 2. And at 2, is this smaller than this? No, it's not. So we don't execute this, and we return 2. Okay. And so, um, so this will uh, return a uh, the, uh, the the random value there. Okay. Now, um, to uh, to control how um, your values go, you can set a seed, and now our unif one will return 0 0.2655, and if I run it again, it'll return 0 0.372. Okay. And if I set seed again 1 and I ask for a random number, it's going to return back the uh, kind of the same, same orders. It's so uh, you're just setting the random seed so that the, uh, the, the process all has a same, kind of the same starting point. So if we all set seed, if you all set seed 1 on your computer, we, you should all get 0.2655, okay, for our unif 1. So we can try running. Um, we're going to simulate um, CDF, and we're going to pass it the variables n is equal to 3 and p equal to 0.5. Uh, did I not do this right? I'm sorry, I have to do CDF and then comma N3P equal to 0.5. Okay, and so this doesn't seem impressive, but here I'm simulating draws from the random 
binomial. So let me do set seed one. So I'm going to do set seed one, and then we can see what our unif one returns. So our unif is going to return 0 0.2655, 0 0.372. So we can kind of see how um, the the order of the um, binomial variables that it should return. So this will return one, one, two, three, one, three, three. Okay. And so if I go back to set seed, I can ask, continue to ask for, OK. And we can see that the output of my, the random uniforms match up with the output that I get, I'm getting from the uh, CDF if I'm setting my seed. So we can try, you know, CDF uh, 0, 3.5. And to simulate. And so um, anyway, we can uh, we can try this with other things, all right? So if we wanted to do you know CDF for uh, let's say we're going to flip the coin a hundred times, okay? And in this case, we could see, all right, what's the probability I get uh, 30, 37 flips if I flip n equal to a hundred and p equal to 0.5. okay? So, 37 happens with that probability, and 38 is at that probability. So, so my uniform has to be between these two numbers for me to return the value of 37, okay? Which means it's not going to happen very often. On the other hand, if I check out the probability of getting 48 and check out the probability of getting 49, if my random uniform happens between these two numbers, then I'll get the number 48. Okay, and so we can uh, we can try the simulation using our cumulative density function for the uh, uh, or it should be cumulative mass function for the binomial with n equal to one hundred and p equal to 0.5. and we can see okay we're getting values like fifty two, forty two, and forty six. All right. So let me just try with set seed 47 and 48, okay? So so here we're uh, we're able to simulate the um, binomial distribution here, okay? Now this is uh, this is a little bit of a uh, not a this is not a pointless exercise because we get to see how how to go from zero to one, okay? Because we have our uniform, and if we have the you know the the mass function, we can um, simulate back basically a, a a random variable here, okay? Uh, the same idea can uh, apply to a continuous distribution. You basically, you know, if you have something so for a normal dis distribution, the uh, cumulative density function looks like this and this is going to go from 0 to 1 and basically you're going to simulate some value here and with that you get some value on the x x axis okay so uh, basically you can generalize what we've done for the um, binomial <coughs> to any other distribution okay and so um, so anyway, we can do that. Now, 
R has built-in functions. It has simulate from the binomial distribution, and it's called R binome. Okay, and you basically say I want you know one random uh, output from the binomial. Uh, I'm going to have 100 coins, and the probability of getting heads for each one is 0.5. And so here I get R binome, uh, and it and it does the same thing. Okay, so so R has a bunch of these random variables uh, built in with the uh, binomial distribution. You can simulate normal distribution. You can simulate um, uh, a lot of these things. Okay, so you can look up gamma, Poisson, uh, whatever whatever thing you want. Are there are there any uh, questions on this? We're good. Okay. All right. So um, I'll probably put some kind of basic uh, simulation uh, together for uh, assignment uh, or, or problem for you. Okay. So so homework four, you'll have a, a few of these numeric things to do. You know. Do some root finding. Do some basic optimization. Do uh, uh, some simulation of random variables. Okay, and then um, and then with the rest of today's time, we we won't have a whole lot. Um, and uh, next week we'll we'll use these concepts of simulation and programming to simulate some more uh, complicated uh, systems. Okay. So I'm going to open up uh, a document here that shows um, how we could simulate the, uh, the game of blackjack, OK? All right. Are you guys, um, well, let me, uh, let me explain the, uh, the game of blackjack first, OK? So some of you guys may already be familiar. Uh, so let me just write this. Okay, so we can generalize. So I'm, uh, let me explain the game of blackjack, and then on Wednesday we'll uh, we'll look at how we can simulate the game of blackjack, okay? Using using R, it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty impressive, and we can uh, I'll even simulate using a card counting method to optimize our our winnings, okay? All right. Anybody here play blackjack? Have played? Blackjack, okay, and then the rest of you, I guess, uh, are not that familiar. Okay, so it's a it's a gambling game, all right, and um, you uh, you know you have a, a deck of cards, okay. So in the uh, in the deck there are fifty two cards, and there are um, four suits, thirteen ranks. In blackjack, the suits do not matter. Only the ranks do. Okay? And so you have ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king. Oops. All right. Um, ten, jack, queen, king, these are worth 
10. Okay? So jack, queen, king, norm, a lot of times we would think this is 11, 12, 13, but these are all worth 10. Okay? The 2 through 9 is uh, worth whatever their value. Okay? <coughs> and uh, this is so 2 through uh, 9 is their face value. Okay, and then the ace can be worth 1 or 11, all right? And, uh, and what happens is um, uh, there's, there are two players. There's the dealer, and then there's you, okay? And, and you get dealt two cards. And the dealer deals himself two cards, OK? Uh, one of the cards is hidden from you, OK? And you get to see the other card. Okay. And then, um, and so you get to see your cards. And, and basically, the, uh, the objective is you want the sum of your cards to be as close to 21 without going over 21. And then uh, the same as the dealer. The dealer has the same objective, OK? Now, let's say you get dealt a 3 and an 8, OK? You have, this, your points are now worth 11, OK? So at this point, you have an option, OK? You have two options. You can either request another card be dealt to you, or you can request to stop. Okay? So your options are hit, which is basically deal, deal another card, or stand, which is, to, um, which is you stop, okay? And you say, this is my total, okay? No more cards. Okay, so if you have eleven, you're going to ask for a hit. Okay, you're going to say hit. Okay, and so let's say, so you are now going to have the three and the eight. Okay, and let's say the last card you get is another eight. Okay, so what are, what are your cards worth now? Nineteen. Nineteen. Okay, so your total is nineteen. <coughs> Okay, and you'll probably say stay, okay, or stand, sorry, not stay, stay is for dogs, okay. Um, so you say <laughs> stand, and then, and then uh, at that point, the dealer flips his, his card over, okay, and reveals what he has, okay. So then the dealer shows now, um, let's say the dealer shows ace, and an eight, okay. So the way uh, the way it works is uh, um, the ace is is going to be worth eleven unless it pitches pushes you over twenty one, and in that case, it drops down to one, okay. So if the ace is worth eleven points, but then if it if being worth eleven causes you to go over twenty one, it uh, reduces, it drops 10 points, okay? So at this point, dealer shows ace and an eight, so the dealer has 19, okay? So you have 19, the dealer has 19, this is called a push, and this means um, no money is exchanged, okay? So generally what happens is you, you have to put down uh, $5 to play, okay? And, um, and if you push, the five dollars you put down to play just goes back to you. Okay. 
So because uh, so you know this is a tie, this is called a push. All right, and so and um, so is, is this part okay? All right, and so so the way the bets work is um, you know a, a push. So we'll say you know you put down five dollars to play. Uh, if you get a push, then um, your five dollars goes back to you. Okay. If you lose, and there are two ways to lose. Okay. You can lose by um, you go over twenty-one. This is called a bust. Okay. So you go over twenty-one. You have bust, and uh, and. The dealer takes your money. Okay, your money goes to the casino. Okay, uh, and then the other thing is you uh, you stand uh, under twenty one, but the dealer's dealer's total is closer to twenty one. Okay. And then so and also your money goes to the casino. Okay, and then a win. This happens. Uh, there there are a few ways to win. One is uh, blackjack. Blackjack means you got an ace and a ten. Okay, and that's an immediate win. It doesn't even matter what the dealer had. Okay. Um, this is an immediate win. Okay, and uh, and depending on how you play, this uh, this can pay uh, one and a, it, it could pay depending on the casino. It might just be you get your five dollars back. In other places, you get one and a half times your bet back, and in other places, it's even more. Okay, so this is an immediate win, and uh, and you, the casino gives you money. Uh, often one and a half times your bet. And the casino always rounds down, so you'd get seven in this case. Okay, but if you bet ten, they would give you fifteen or something like that. Okay, uh, so that's a that's a, a win. And then the other ways to win is um, you stand. Okay, and then the uh, dealer busts. Dealer busts, or you stand, and uh, dealer's total. Dealer's total um, is uh, not closer to um, twenty-one than yours. Okay, there are. Um, the the way the dealer works, okay. Dealer will always hit um, totals less than sixteen or sixteen or under. Dealers will always hit totals um, sixteen and less, and dealer will always stand at seventeen or higher. And so the way the casino maintains its advantage is um, you have to make your decision before the dealer does. Okay? And because you have to make your decision on whether to hit or stand, you're working with partial information, and that's, that's, uh, that's how the casino maintains their advantage. Okay? Because you don't know what's coming. Um, and then so... Uh, so you know your biggest risk is basically, you know, choosing to hit. You know, you hit on like a thirteen or something, and uh, and you bust or something like that. Okay, you get dealt a ten, and you go over twenty-one. Um, okay, so this is um, this is that. There's there are a few other things. Okay, 
you can um, other options, other other choices beyond um, hit and stand. Okay, one is called a split. All right, so this is um, you get dealt. two of the same cards. OK, so the classic one is you get dealt, let's say, an 8 and an 8. OK? So normally, this would just be worth 16. And 16 is like a difficult position to be in, OK? Because 16 is um, like the, you have a high risk of busting, OK? Because anything. If you get dealt a card that's five or more, uh, more than five, so six, seven, eight, nine, or ten, and there's a lot of those, um, you're going to bust. Okay, and uh, and also the dealer is going to keep dealing until the dealer hits at least seventeen or higher. Okay, now there, it's possible if you get sixteen, your hope, your only hope of winning is that the dealer um, busts. Okay, that's the only way you could win if you get sixteen, because if the dealer stands at between 17 through 21, the dealer wins, OK? So 8 and 8 is a hard thing to do. So one thing you can do is you can say split. And what happens is uh, now it's like you get dealt an 8 over here. And then you just get dealt a new card, OK? And then this 8 goes over here, and you get dealt a new card. So maybe you get a 10, and maybe you get a 3, OK? So here, now you have a total of 18, OK? And over here, you have 11. And then you can say, hit me again, and you get dealt a, a 7, OK? And then so now your total is 18. And then so you would stand. And over here, you would stand, OK? And then, um, and then let's say the dealer ends up getting uh, 17, OK? So then you win, and you win twice, OK? You have to. To split, you have to put down another bet. Like you have to put down another $5, OK? But now you're playing two hands at the same time. Is this OK? All of this blackjack nonsense? Yeah. When you said ace or 10, did you mean the card pin or the value pin for the blackjack? Like you put the ace and the jack or the ace and the king? Yeah, it's an ace and a, and a 10. And when I say 10, it's a 10 jack, queen, king, OK? Uh, a 10 is basically uh, any of those. So from here on out, whenever I say 10, 10 will mean a 10, jack, queen, or king. OK? Those, these are all 10. It, it, it doesn't matter. OK? So the classic is you'd get the ace and the jack, and then that's the official blackjack. But, uh, <laughs> but whatever. It's, it's just an ace 10. Whether it's a whether that ten is a jack, queen, or king, um, or ten, yeah. And when you play in split, um, what if you get one hand winning and another hand uh, say bust or lose? lose? Yeah. So then, um, then it's you're basically now two players. So the hand that wins wins, and then the hand that loses loses. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So it cancels out, right? It so cancels no, out. No exchange of money. Well, the dealer will take that money. And then give it to the winning hand. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. But so the net net win is would be zero. That that's correct. But um, but yeah. And then you know the from house to house you've got different slightly different rules. Okay. Uh, there's another one, and then there's this one's called double down. Okay. And double down is usually only allowed if your current total is ten or eleven. Okay. So with double down is, um, you know, you get, let's say you get dealt a 4 and a 7, OK? Your total is 11, OK? And then so your current bet, you start off, your, your starting bet, let's say, was 5, OK? You double down, and then you put down an additional 5. As you bet another 5. Okay, so now your total bet is 10. 
and then what happens is the, the dealer deals you one more card, okay? You get one more card, and, and then after that you have to stand. So even if the next card is like a 2, and your total is 13, you have to stand, okay? What you're hoping for is the next card is a 10, okay? And then your total here is a 21. You're going to stand, and then hope the dealer doesn't beat you there. Okay. Uh, the dealer will beat you if the dealer has gets blackjack. Okay. So not all 21s are equal. <laughs> okay. So so if you get a blackjack which is uh, 21 with just two cards, um, that's an instant win for you. Uh, if the dealer is dealt 21 and it's more than two cards, then th that would be a tie with your 21. Okay. But if the dealer gets 21 with just two cards their uh, 21 beats you, okay? Uh, well, that, that rule might differ from place to place, but generally that's how it goes, yeah. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll stop here. Uh, we'll, we'll look at a complex simulation. I'll, I'll post these, uh, this online as well for you to start reading. We'll, we'll work through this on Wednesday. Uh, I think it'll be pretty neat. I think it'll be neat, okay?